The tradition of George Washington's birth night ball in Alexandria is about so much more than going to a party in your finery. It's a memory, a way to commemorate or honor George Washington. Let's take a look at the birth night ball and the role this event played in Alexandria and the nation. The birth night ball originated in Britain to commemorate and celebrate the birth night or birthday of the monarch each year. During the revolution, Americans continued this tradition but celebrated Washington's birthday instead. The first public celebration of George Washington's birthday was at Valley Forge on February 22, 1778, when the Continental Artillery Band serenaded Washington. In 1789, years after the Revolutionary War, Washington became the nation's first president. With this, birthday celebrations in his honor were revived on a larger scale and continued throughout his two terms. As political parties began to solidify, some did not approve of these large-scale events. Even Washington himself expressed concern that the celebrations were too similar to what was done for the British monarch. These birthday celebrations were held not only in Philadelphia, the nation's capital, but also in his childhood hometown of Fredericksburg, as well as Alexandria. The first birth night ball held in Alexandria likely occurred in 1789. Tavern keeper John Gadsby continued the tradition in 1797. However, George Washington was still in Philadelphia, so could not attend. Birth night balls honoring Washington continued even after his retirement from the presidency. In fact, it was because he retired to Mount Vernon that he was able to attend the birth night balls in Alexandria. Hosted at Gadsby's Tavern, also known as the City Hotel, in 1798 and 1799. John Gadsby hosted the general on February 12, 1798. Preparations before and service during the evening were handled by Gadsby's enslaved staff. Washington noted in his journal, Went with the family to a ball in Alexandria, given by the citizens of it and its vicinity, in commemoration of the anniversary of my birthday. We also know some details from the evening thanks to his step-granddaughter Eleanor Nellie Park Custis, who wrote to her friend Elizabeth Bordley Gibson on March 20th, 1798. My grandparents and self went up to Alexandria to attend the celebration of the birth night. The room was crowded. There were 25 or 30 couples in the two first sets. I danced with our little friend G.W. Craig, whom you may well remember. We danced until two o'clock. I went with Mrs. Potts to her house and sat up until five. This ball to honor the retired president in Alexandria was not a controversial event. However, a ball in his honor in Philadelphia rubbed some the wrong way. First Lady Abigail Adams declared, In what light would such a step be looked upon by foreign nations? The president, the chief magistrate of an independent nation, placing himself in a secondary character, celebrating birth nights not of a president, but a private citizen. On February 11, 1799, Washington returned to Gadsby's for another birth night ball. He wrote in his journal, Went up to Alexandria to the celebration of my birthday. Many maneuvers were performed by the Uniform Corps and an elegant ball and supper at night. Ten months after these birth night festivities, George Washington passed away on December 14, 1799. The quarrels over the need to have a ball for a retired president faded away as the event changed to honor the memory of him, celebrating his role in the creation of the nation. The tradition of the birth night ball continued in this vein, particularly in Alexandria. In 1805, Lucinda Herbert, granddaughter of John Carlyle, wrote to her older sister about the event John Gadsby and his enslaved staff presented. The birth night ball supper was very elegant. A large cake in the center of the table ornamented with an equestrian statue of General Washington, the whole covered with a sugar candy net in the form of a cone, on the top of which 
was the American Eagle. A variety of ornamented cakes, sugar baskets, pyramids, West Indian fruit served on glass gave a beautiful effect to the whole. There were 1,100 persons at the city ball. Every room and even the passages were filled with company. By 1809, John Gadsby had left to run a different hotel in Baltimore, but the tradition was continued by the next city hotel operator, William Caton. That particular year, a dramatic addition adorned the ballroom. A 14 by 11 foot canvas designed by George Washington Park Custis, Washington's step grandson. It was described as having a large temple in the background with an obelisk in the center bearing the name and image of Washington. The canvas was covered with a flame of glory through which the American eagle descended while the Daughters of America lay a garland in his memory. The balls continued throughout the War of 1812 and into the 1820s. With the passage of time, the tradition in Alexandria began to fade. In 1842, planning only began a few weeks prior to the event. It ultimately took place, but at the Alexandria Theater, its first year not at the City Hotel. In the years leading up to the Civil War, the ball was hosted by various military groups. During the war, celebrations ceased as Alexandria was governed by martial law and transformed into a hub for the U.S. military. As Alexandria emerged from the Civil War, the ball had become a distant memory. White Alexandrians, who were largely Confederate sympathizers, lamented, No outward demonstrations of rejoicings, no military and civic celebrations, nothing that can distinguish this day from any other on the calendar. At such a time as this, amidst the scenes that are transpiring, the people have not heart to rejoice and be glad. The 20th century brought a renewed interest in all things connected to the revolution and early America, including the birthnight ball. Industrialization was transforming the nation, with people moving from farms to cities and an influx of immigrants arriving to fill factory jobs. This sense of nostalgia helped white communities in particular cope with the rapid changes. They used the colonial revival to anchor themselves in the perceived traditions and values of the past. The purchase and creation of Gadsby's Tavern Museum took place as part of this larger movement. The American Legion Post 24 purchased Gadsby's in 1929 and revived the Birthnight Ball only one year later. The Legion completed much of the building restoration by 1932 in time for the 200th anniversary of George Washington's birth. To celebrate, many descendants of those originally at the 1799 ball attended the 1932 ball. Some even wore their ancestors' antique gowns. The event was broadcast live on NBC Radio from the historic ballroom. Wartime efforts overtook the focus of Alexandria during the 1940s, but the tradition returned in 1946. Actors portraying George and Martha Washington attended and a 501-pound birthday cake was cut with an 18th-century sword. The Legion continued the birthnight ball celebration tradition in the 1950s and 60s. By 1972, the Legion had donated the museum buildings to the city of Alexandria. After a four-year renovation, the ball, with a banquet, returned to the tavern, the year marking the nation's 200th anniversary. The event continued to expand over the years. In the 1980s, the banquet was hosted at a local hotel with dancing after in the museum's historic ballroom. Nearly 200 years after John Gadsby's first birthnight ball, the event returned in its entirety to the museum with both the banquet and dancing assembly on site. Since then, Gadsby's Tavern Museum has hosted the annual birthnight banquet and ball. This historic event continues to attract new guests as well as a merry band of returning attendees. While the birthnight ball has changed over the centuries, at its core is George Washington and a recognition of his influence on the founding of America.